Welcome to Park Stadium on the campus of St. Andrews Municipal School for today's 4A South Preparatory Conference Championship game between the two-seeded ESD Eagles and the one-seeded St. Mark's Lions. At this time, we ask everyone to please rise and remove their hats for our national anthem. Now for the starting lineups. First for ESD. Number one, Riley Colbert. Number five, Christ Johnson. Number ten, Sean Brown. Sean Bro. Number eleven, Mac Rodwold. Number fourteen, Fletcher Calvert. Number seventeen, Eli Huggins. Number twenty-four, Cash Brownling. Number twenty-seven, Michael Cohen. Number thirty-two, Eddie Allison. Number thirty-six, Jack Whittam. And number forty, Cooper Rainey. Now for the start on the starting lineups for St. Mark's. At attack, number 10, Ian Mize, number 17, Henry Pigley, and number 22, Jack Park. At midi, number 10, Paul, Mur Paul Murray, number 9, Alex Gang at faceoff, number 13, Henry Boykin, and number 23, Connor Duffy at LSM, and number 28, Luke Stallings. And good evening to you. Welcome to Beck Stadium. Well, spoke too soon. Number 25, Grant Warnick. Number 31, Henry Stalter. And, and in goal, number 6, James Holtz. All right, I think he's done now. Welcome, everybody, and uh, welcome back to Beck Stadium on the campus of St. Andrews Episcopal School in southwest Austin, Texas. My name is Merle Bertrand, joined by my producer, Jack Farrell, the coach, Les Clary, our QA, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast for the 2022 SBC 4A Boys Lacrosse Championship game between the Episcopal School of Dallas Eagles and the St. Mark's Lions here at St. Andrews. And if this game is anything like the 3A game that just got down about 30 minutes ago, you were in for a treat. St. Andrews coming back from a four-goal deficit in the fourth period, trailing at 14-10, forced a tie, heading into overtime, and won at 15-14 St. Andrews over uh, Trinity Valley, 15 to 14 in overtime to win the 3A championship. Here it's one versus two in the 4A championship and we are just about underway for 12 minute periods. And here we go. St. Mark's going from left to right there wearing the road white jerseys with the golden numerals on the back. And Episcopal School of Dallas in the dark blue with the white numerals going from right to left. They've controlled the face off. And the pass over the right side, and a quick goal. We're underway. One to nothing. Episcopal School of Dallas drawing first blood. Ah, the goal by Eli Huggins. So one nothing. ESD. Face off rolls three, still a battle for it. And ESD comes up with it, but now the turnover gives the ball back to St. Mark's coming from left to right. 
There come the Lions on the attack. Step it off on the near side. This is Murphy Paul. Paul still moving in. Being hassled by Bowling Cash. Working to his left. Swing over the left side. That ball is deflected, thrown away, but Lions get it back. St. Mark's over on the far side. Dump it here to the right side. Boykin gets it over to Ian Mize. 80 second shot clock in high school lacrosse. There are 17 seconds remaining on that clock. That pass is going to go out of bounds. It'll be a turnover nonetheless, and the ball will go back to the Eagles. St. Mark's coming in with an unofficial mark of 11 and 2 under head coach Jason Leno, defeating Episcopal 21 to 1 in the semifinal round yesterday to punch their ticket to this championship game. And that pass up the near side and unable to stay out of bounds. It'll be a turnover right back. The ball will go back to St. Mark's. Episcopal School of Dallas, 14 and 3 overall under head coach Jay Sortheron. They defeated Kincaid 20 to 5 in yesterday's semifinal round. Inside of 10 minutes to go, just underway here in this 4A championship game. Blustery, windy conditions, about 82, 83 degrees, but the wind is just gusting like crazy from right to left, off and on throughout the day. There's a centering pass and a shot, beautiful save in goal. And the follow kicked away. Still loose, still in trouble. In goal for ESD. Jack Scott with a couple of nice saves there for the Eagles. A couple of saves to number 31, Jack Scott. And the sidewinder from the right side, sails wide left from Sean Brown. Ball is shot out of bounds, backed up by ESG, still Eagles ball. ESD maintains possession, working behind the net. Working, wrap around, not there. Shakes off the defense, a centering pass, a shot, and it goes wide right. Shot is wide, backed up by ESD, still the Eagles ball. Out on top, working to his right. Is Mac Rodvold. Out on top to go to Swift. Swift over to the near side. Shakes off the defense and the shot kicks wide right. And the score remains 1 0. That was Cooper Rainey with that shot attempt. That shot sails wide over the net. You're fine. 8-18 to go first quarter, still 1-0. One, one quick goal from the Eagles. And that's been it ever since. James Fultz in between the pipes for St. Mark's, by the way. Wearing number six. It is line ball up the far side. Double team checked off the ball. Loose and... Lions get it back. Pass over here to the right side to Jack Gordy. Gordy working to his left, swings it over to the far side. Back to Gordy. Runs past the defense, now on the attack right side, but triple team, they'll dump it back behind the net and set up back there. Centering pass, fires, and again a deflection by Scott. Another nice stop. 
by the Eagle goalkeeper. Working left through the defense and fires into the net goal. Waiting to get a look at the number. I think it was 13. It was. So Ian Mize with the goal. Or check that, the Henry, Henry Boy, Boykin with that goal. And we're tied at one apiece. 7.07 to go first period. St. Martin number's just a little bit tough to read, that yellow on white. We'll do the best we can with that. And another kick save again by Jack Scott. He's turned away four shots on goals thus far. We're only in the first period. And now the Eagles on the attack. Shuttle it underhand into the, go into the zone. Back on top they go to Blair Brennan. Swing it over on the far side. Herbert passing here for the Eagles. Now on the attack, spin it back out, get it out on top to Brennan. Ball kicked up in the air. And it'll go out of bounds. Staying with the Eagles on the attack, left side. Shot wide right. From Fletcher Calvert. Six twelve to go here in this opening period. Tied up one apiece. Dump it over on the right. Wrap around sails. Wide left. Back stopped by the Eagles. They'll maintain possession. This is Jack Whitman with it. Moving to his right now to his left is Blair Brennan. Number 23 still has it. Turn it out on top, they'll reset. On the attack, right side, shot. Deflected wide left. Foot race to get to it. And St. Mark's comes up with it, but I think he stepped on the line in doing so. And it'll stay with the Eagles. ESD ball, Sean Brown, number 10 here in the corner with it. Working his way back behind the net. Centering pass out on top to his left. Bounce shot goes over the net. Back stop by the Eagles. They'll maintain possession. No. going to go back to St. Mark's. Well, the Lions working up, and that pass overthrown. It'll be picked up, and well, still loose on the grass. And now the Eagles come up with it. Starting to move from right to left. Blair Blinden with it. Dumps it over here to the near side to Eli Huggins. Huggins back to Brennan. Spins through the defense into the attack zone. And lost, lost the stick. He was checked off the ball, and the ball will go back to St. Mark's. St. Mark's on the attack now, as Jake Bond with it. And Bond took a shot. He's shaking up on the near sideline, holding his right ankle. We'll hope his okay. They'll play on here for the moment. And now they're going to stop player for the injured player. Jake Bond is shaking up on the near sideline. That stops the clock with 4.12 to go in the opening period. One all. going to walk off the field, putting a little weight on the right wheel. Hopefully he'll be able to 
get that taped up and return to the action here. Jake Bond, a junior midfielder for the Lions. Hopefully he can get back in the game. It'll probably feel worse tomorrow. Four twelve to go, opening period, one apiece. Yeah, the SBC 4A Boys Championship game. Only game remaining, they're down on the field behind us. And back to the action, here we go. Boykin, over to the near side now. Stallings. Working to his right, centering pass, fires, and again. Right into the oversized net. And St. Mark's checks him off the ball, and here come the Lions on the attack from left to right. Working through the defense. Jack Scott's been the difference in this game right now. He's turned away about five shots in goal for the Eagles. Hey, Mark's on the attack again over on the left side. Swing it over to Boykin. Now moving to his right. Underhand scoop shot, no good. Skitters off to the left side from Holden Browning, or uh, Luke Stallings. Ball stays with the Lions here. Three minutes to go, opening period. Working behind the net, now they get it out on top. Pivot left. Center it out to Jake Park. Park working to his right, through the defense, off the screen. Dumps it back behind the net, reset the offense. Back out on top. To his left goes Boykin. Boykin with the sidewinder sails wide right and backstop by the Lions again with two and a half to go. Now they reverse the call and give the ball back to the Eagles. So here comes ESD moving from right to left. Cross field pass, track down. Back in the back out is Mac Rodwald. Over on the right side, this is Jack, Jack Swift. Dumps it back behind the net. Pivot, spins, loses his footing, stays on his feet, maintains possession. Does Brown and check off the ball. Here come the Lions. But it checked the other way, gives the ball back to ESD and the entry pass, and we got a flag. Looks like gonna be called here on St. Mark's. Looks like Luke Nowak might be in the box for 30 seconds to a minute here. We'll check the official call. There are actually two flags down on the field. So we'll let them sort this all out.
So two separate penalties on the play, apparently, both on St. Mark's. So the Lions will be a couple of guys short here. So six on four here in the offensive zone for the Eagles. And that will be in as a goal. James Fultz got the net on it, just couldn't quite control it. It just dribbled across the plane into the net. And that will be a goal for the Eagles to make it two to one with 109 to go. That wipes out both penalties since they were minor penalties. So the team's back at equal strength with 109 to go, but now the Eagles up two to one. Off the face off, controlled by the Eagles coming from right to left. Pass over the left side, shot fires and a beautiful save. Nice save by James Fultz, the senior that time. And the Lions coming right back from left to right. Good centering pass on the attack. Fires and that ball right into the waiting clutches once again of Scott. Now the Eagles trying to get something going. The ball kicked into the zone, checked off the ball. Lions battling for 35 seconds to go in the opening frame. Eagles come up with it. Double team back behind the net. And whistles blow. Timeout. Timeout going to be taken by ESD with 29.3 seconds to go. We'll keep it here since we're about to take a break in about 29 seconds. Kind of a defensive struggle in this one. Two to one your score. Happy to have you with us here for this championship broadcast. Pipe has been broadcasting SBC championship games this year for the fall and the winter sports. Those are on Flow Sports, a partnership with them, but we're back on our own again for the spring sports. So we'll be back with you next week in Houston for the girls across championship, along with the baseball and the softball championship games. From the greater Houston area, St. John's is hosting baseball, I know. Kincaid is hosting, I believe, softball. Thank you to Jeff McCrary, the athletic director here at St. Andrews, Bob Windham, the SBC commissioner, for working with us all season long to get these broadcasts on the air at championship time. I'm going to get home tonight. I feel like I've been through a sandblaster. This wind is just constant. So 29.3 seconds left in this opening period. Eagles trying to draw up a play to get another goal here before the end of the quarter. And Jack Whittem. Sends it back into play. Centering pass on top. Pass over to the near side. Out on the right side. Clock down to 13. And that ball sails out of bounds. But it'll stay with the Eagles. On the attack again. This is Brennan with it. Locked down to one second, and the shot goes wide right, and that's going to be the end of the first period. 
So a defensive struggle here in the first period. You score at the end of one. It's the Episcopal School of Dallas 2, St. Mark's 1. We'll take a break. Be back for quarter number two. You're watching the 2022 SPC 4A Boys Across Championship game on Vibe Live. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. And welcome back to Beck Stadium on the campus of St. Andrews. Merle Bertrand along with Jack Farrell here. Les Clary keeping an eye and an ear on our broadcast. Busy day for us here on Vibe on a Saturday. We've got baseball. We've got all-star basketball. We've got softball. And, of course, SPC lacrosse. As we get ready to head into May, hard to believe. Two to one your score. Eagles on top of the Lions. Teams have switched sides. And now St. Mark's going from right to left. And ESD going from left to right into the teeth of the wind. And the ball will be awarded here to St. Mark's. Puts the Lions on the attack, trying to tie this one up. Boykin kicks it over to the far side to Murphy Paul. Working behind the net. Coming out to his right. Paul. Ooh, that shot. I think it went off the top of the uh, cross pipe. Kicks all the way out. Cross midfield. And yeah, loose ball on the grass, scooped up by the Lions. This is Boykin with it. Splits this to the defense. Got through two of them. That draws a nice round of applause by the St. Mark's fans. And Boykin has it back. Working back behind the net. Now out on top. This is Ian Mize. Mize is low. Sidewinders. Kids off to the left side, no good. Fight for the ball before it heads out of bounds, and it will stay with St. Mark's. High pass, tracked down by the Lions. They maintain possession. And now might throw this one away. The loose ball in the corner, and the Eagles are digging for it, but still loose. Checked off the ball, and St. Mark's comes up with it. Centering pass out on top. Jump over on the right side. Shakes off the defense, and the bounce shot into the net goal by Murphy Paul Jr. We're tied at two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wind really kicked up. I don't know where that time. And love it, love it. Check your luggage at the gate. Two to two with 207 to go. Wind is still gusting pretty good here. And ESD comes up with it. Whistles blow and we'll get a timeout. Good. We need one too so we can re anchor all the equipment. Really came up and stuff went sailing, but I think we're all right.
Couple of young men down below from Austin High School and Westlake High School here in Austin. Actually being nice to each other, that doesn't happen very often. Look at their lacrosse players as well, so more than likely they know some of the players on these two teams playing. It is windy. It'll be fine for a while, then it kicks up. And that was that was a big gust. Both laptops lifted up in the air. The camera got knocked over. So 9.44 to go in the first half. Back to the action, ESD with the ball. Moving from right to left. Pass over on the far side. Shot and that rifled into the net for a goal from Sean Brown. And that'll help the Eagles reclaim the lead three to two. So 3-2 Eagles on top. And now the Lions control the face off and the ball checked away and ESD gets it back. They'll go back to work, trying to build on a one goal lead. Pass over on the far side. Center it, do a shift change here. On the attack right side is Blair Brennan. Brennan dumps it behind the net. All the way out to Fletcher Calvert. Calvert to TJ Gatchel. Spoke to Sue, and there he gets it to Gatchel. Dumping it back behind the net, the net to Whit Whittem. Whittem shakes off the defense to his left, picked up nicely. Now starts to his right. Almost horse collar, no flag, and there is a flag comes flying in. And that'll draw the flag. Nice save by Fultz in goal. But the penalty should give EST the one man advantage here with 8.28 to go in the first half. ESD on the attack with a one-man advantage here for 30 seconds. Side, low slide winder bounces into the net, and that'll be a goal for ESD. Dropped in by Sean Brown, and that makes it 4-2 to as Eagles will double him up. Goal is scored by number 10, Sean Brown. 8.08 to go first half. ESD has now doubled the lead, 4-2. Lions come away with the face off this time. Rolled it over to the left side. Demise. Get it back out on top. Lions on the attack. Mize within the corner. Get it back out on top to Moulton. Over on the right wing. the left side of the net. 
Double team. Working right side, shakes off the defense, nothing there. We'll bring it back behind the net to the left. Out on top, centering pass. Left side, spins back to his right. Now pass the left side, the shot fires and it bounces and ricochets off the top of the pipe. Did everything but go in. And we stay at four to two with 7.05 to go first half. Left side, shot sails wide left, backstop by the Lions. Okay, Mark's working the offense on the right side. Now they set it up out on top. That shot bounced and blocked by Scott. Scott's play big there between the net for ESD, and that ball deflected a loose, and here come the Lions on the turnover. Ball pushed away from behind, however, and here come the Eagles back the other way. Dumped the pass over on the right side, a shot over the left side, and a shot into the net goal. 10 to 36, good ball movement. Sean Brown with the assist, dumps it off to Jack Whittem, and it's 5-2 ESD. So five to two, your score now, three unanswered goals for ESD. Lions come up with the face off this time. They get it back to the long poles to reset the offense and start their attack. Spins through the defense. Across the midfield stripe, nifty move there. Into the attack zone, dumps it off here to the near side to Mize. Mize sends it back out. Get a line change here for the Lions. On the right wing, working on the far side. This is Paul. Out on top, and the shot, oh, again, just hard ricochet off the top of the top of the goal. That's about the fourth one that St. Mark's has had that have caught a piece of the pipe. Stays with the Lions. On the attack left side, that shot is right into the waiting clutches of Scott. Save number 31, Jack Scott. So the ball turned over, and here comes Murphy Paul back the other way for the Lions. Into the attack zone, shakes off the defense. Dumps it back out. Right side. Swinging into the corner. Dumps it back out. Ball checked away and take it away by ESD, but intercepted. Empty net and a score. Couldn't clear it. And Connor Duffy there to pick up the interception. Hold everything, however. There is a flag down, however. They might pick that pick that up. So take the goal off the board. It was a penalty on St. Mark's. So as soon as they touch the ball, play is dead. So no goal. Score remains five to two. Penalty at number 17, Henry Piccadilly for a cross check. One minute penalty and no goal. So a one minute cross check penalty at Piccadilly takes the goal away and gives ESD instead a one man advantage with 447 to go in the first half. Here come the Eagles on the attack. Rodvald with it on the far side. Dumps it over here to the near side to Swift. Swift to Brown. Working back behind the net. And shot rifled into the net goal.
First goal of the game for ESD's Cooper Rainey. And the Eagles are now boosted it up to a four goal lead, 431 remaining, six to two your score. Eliminates the rest of the penalty. Team's back at equal strength. Six to two, ESD on top. And the Lions control that face off. Go to work here to the near side. Niles Harvey with it. Gets it over to Mize. Mize checked as he tries to Get the shot off, the ball's loose on the far sideline, scooped up by the Lions, now loose, now the Lions get it back on the far side. And checked off the ball, turnover, we'll give the ball back to ESD. Timeout is taken by St. Mark's. And St. Mark's will take a timeout here with 4.03 to go. We'll go ahead and take it with them. 403 to go, 62 ESD on top. You're watching the 4 SBC 4A championship game on Vipe Live. Vipe Live, formerly K Max Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VipeVipe.com. Vipe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VipeVipe.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. And welcome back to St. Andrews. 6-2, your score, ESD, a Christian school of Dallas on top of St. Mark's here in this 4 championship game with 4.03 to go in the first half. Warm, blustery day. Field's in great shape. Grass surface here at St. Andrews. For as much activity as it's seen the past couple of days and just in general. In great, great shape. Here come the Eagles, and they are going to turn it over as Huggins unable to handle that pass. The ball goes out of bounds, but the Lions turn it back over, and ESD gets it right back. Huggins will bring it back up again. Dumps it off to Rodwald. He lost the handle, checked off the ball, and here come the Lions on the attack. Centering pass here to the near side to Blake Bolton. I think that's who that is. Those numbers are awful hard to read. It's an eight, Luke Stallings, pardon me. Thank you, Jack. Over on the right side. Spins past the defense and hit right as he tries to get the shot off. Centering pass in traffic, knocked away. Lions maintain possession. Double team trapped on the far sideline. Now they get over on the left swing. The sidewinder and Scott is there again. Jake Park had a great look at it. Out the pass up to the right side. Here comes ESC on the attack over on the left wing. And the turnaround shot sails wide right. Back stop by the Eagles. They'll maintain possession with 2.44 to go in the half. Out on top to Dax Dundon. Centers it over on the left wing. Shot one hops and kicked up in the air and a nice save. Loose ball. Good job there by James Fultz. 
And the Lions maintain possession after the save. Ball kicked away, but St. Mark's gets it back. Working through the check across the midfield strike. Here come the Lions. Matthew Hoffman with it. And that pass is going to be knocked down and intercepted by the Eagles. But checked off the ball, still loose. ESD gets it back, however. Outlet pass saved, tracked down there by Scott. They dump it up here to the near side of Calvert. Dumps it up to Riley Calvert. Calvert looks, fires, and the ball sails wide left. It'll stay with the Eagles with 99 ticks on the clock in the first half. Out on top left side, this is Brennan with it. 90 seconds, near side to Calvert, back to Brennan. Brennan to his right, back behind the net. Working spin, Brown, still with it, working on the defense. Pass over on the left side. Oh, lost his footing trying to attack, double team, State maintains possession. And now a flag coming in, a penalty gonna be called here on the Lions. Ball checked up in the air, still loose. St. Mark's comes up with it, now we'll have the flag with 55.1 seconds to go. So another penalty on St. Mark's will give ESD at least a 30 second man advantage, depending on the call. Thirty-second holding call on Noax. Back underway. On the top on the right side now. Centered over on the left wing. Picked up now. Centering again. The shot and deflected and a nice save again by James Holt. Boy, both these goalkeepers have done a nice job today. Time for one more run, perhaps for St. Mark's with about thirty seconds to go in the half. Lions. Trying to get it across the half court stripe, they do. Still with it, and a flag comes in. This will be a penalty on ESD. So St. Mark's will have a man advantage here for the final 17 and a half seconds of the first half. Thanks again to Les Cleary, our QA, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast. We always have somebody monitoring each of our broadcasts to make sure that it's staying on the air, the internet being what the internet is. So thank you, Les, for giving up your entire Saturday. He's been with us since about 9.30 this morning with our first baseball game. Looks like they're going to pick up that flag. And a timeout will be taken by St. Mark's with 17 seconds left to go. McNeil leading Stony Point 13 to 7. That's baseball action over at Stony Point in Round Rock. Blue leading the white 51 to 29 and the uh, Girls Houston Area Basketball Coaches Association All-Star Game sponsored by Vite 51 to 29. A lot of girl a lot of good girls basketball being played this afternoon out in uh, at Wheeler Fieldhouse in Fort Bend. Hendrickson leading Elgin 12 to three in baseball. Just some of the other games going on to this afternoon on Vibe Live on a Saturday afternoon. If you missed it, we'll have the replay posted for you later today. 15 to 14, St. Andrews over Trinity Valley in overtime. Trinity Valley led by three, St. Andrews led by three, Trinity Valley led by four, heading into the fourth period. St. Andrews tied it up late in the fourth period and scored the 15th and game-winning goal in sudden death overtime, 15 to 14, to become the SBC 3A champions. 
This one six to two in favor of the Eagles from ESD. Final game of the tournament. Tournament started, I believe it was Thursday afternoon. Semifinals yesterday, the finals and consolation games today. All right, back into the action, the final 15 seconds here. ES, ESD's ball moving from left to right. Nine seconds to go. Getting it across the midfield stride, three seconds. Dumped it over to the right side, off the check, the pot shot, and deflected by Fultz. Get a roll out of bounds, and that'll take us to the end of the first half. So 24 minutes in the books, 24 minutes left in the 2022 SBC. Boys Across Championship Tournament, and your score at the end of the first half, 6-2, Episcopal School of Dallas on top of St. Mark's. We'll take a quick break and then uh, turn it back over to the sounds of the ballpark and be back for second half action. You're watching the 2022 SBC 4A Championship game on Vipe Live. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today.
And welcome back to Beck Stadium in the campus of St. Andrews. Second half about ready to get underway. Merle Bertrand along with Jack Farrell. Les Clary, the coach, keeping an eye and an ear on our broadcast for us this afternoon. Thank you, Les. Six to two, your score. 
Episcopal School of Dallas Eagles in the navy blue and the white going from right to left. They lead it over the St. Mark Lions in the road whites with the golden rod numerals and the navy blue trim. So here we go, ESC going from right to left up in the 6-2 lead. Pass on the left side, centered out on top. Been a defensive struggle in this one, more so than the earlier game. Cloudy and windy here in Austin. It cools off and the sun goes behind the clouds. Working to his right is Dax Dundon. Over on the far wing. Behind the net, swinging to the left side. Now back, centering out on top. To his right is Rodvold. Rodvold gets it back. Off the defense. 80 second shot clock, it's down to about 15. Jake Swift now with it, 10 seconds on the shot clock. And the ball sails out of bounds, backstop by ESD, they got five seconds to get a shot. Nope, it's gonna be a turnover, it'll go back to the Lions. So St. Mark's is their first offensive possession of the second half. Long poles bringing it up here to the near side. And pivot back around. This is Connor Duffy. Outlet pass. Still haven't got it across the half court stripe. And that pass is thrown away. Loose into the attack zone. Still loose. St. Mark's comes up with a loose ball. This is Murphy Paul with it. Rolls the pass out on top. They'll reset the offense to Mize. My centers it to Stallings. Stallings dumps it to the near side to Paul. Paul to his right, now to his left. Picked up nicely. Centering pass on top. Stallings with it again. Inside of 10 minutes to go, third quarter. Stallings working through the defense. Attacks right side. Cut off. Being harassed by Eli Huggins. And shot into the net goal. Stallings gets the last lap on that one. Huggins gave him the business, but Stallings just kept his concentration. And that ends a 4-0 run for ESD. It makes the score now 6-3. Nice work by Luke Stallings. Alice Wisk working the pace off for ESD. Looking to see who that is. I believe that is Alex Jean on the face off for the Lions. And that ball will sail out of bounds. A little confusion, I think, as to whose ball it's going to be. And now it's going to get a penalty called on the Lions for protesting that call a little bit. St. Mark's coaching staff and bench just livid that it should be their ball and finally the official throws the flag. Now the official's going to get together to talk about it, which they should do. St. Mark's coached by Jason Leno, ESD coached by Jay Sortheron. Long discussion at the scores table over there. penalty on 
on St. Mark's, number 17, Henry Piccadilly. Piccadilly. For an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, 30 seconds. So 30 second unsportsmanlike on Henry Piccadilly. The ball will stay with ESD after all of that. Play back underway. Eagles with the man advantage on the offensive zone. Six on five, and that ball kicked away. Loose on the grass, scooped up by the Eagles on the far side. St. Mark's battling for, however, trying to get the turnover to run off some more clock. And the long outlet pass will do a bunch of that. Heard a whistle, but I don't see, didn't see who blew it. Ball will go to the Lions. 8.44 to go third quarter, 6-3 to three your score. All right, back to the action. St. Mark's ball, pushing it into the attack zone. And now another whistle blows, and we're gonna get a timeout. Timeout taken by St. Mark's. It's all Jack's fault, because he's talking about how quickly the game was moving along. Wow, wild one at Stony Point. McNeil and Stony Point tied up 13 all in the bottom of the seventh inning. And Neil led that game by a bunch early on. All the Austin High guys and the Westside guys look like they might be in uniform, so I don't know if they're having some sort of a play-in game or seating game or something like that on this field after this one. If that's the case, a long afternoon gets even longer for the folks here at St. Andrews. So after the timeout, it will be Lion Ball. We've got 8.34 to go left in period number three, six to three, your score, ESD on top, and here we go. Murphy Paul with it on the right side. Working deep into the corner. Huggins all over him, checks him off the ball, loses it out of bounds, and a nice play by Huggins that time with the stick check. Gives the ball back to ESD. Here comes Van Evasian. And that shot deflected. Good save again in the net by James Fultz. Save was made at number six, James, James Fultz. Lions get it back. Inside of eight minutes to go in period number three. And a good outlet pass up to the right side fluidly to Connor Duffy. Duffy. Has the ball checked away. Duffy gets it back, however. Tips it over to the right side. Spies with a backhander sails wide left. And the ball will go back to ESD. Shot goes wide, but it is back and backed up by ESD. It is Eagles ball. Here comes Episcopal School to Dallas, moving up from right to left, trying to build on a three-goal lead across the midfield stripe. And that pass is going to be low and away. A turnover will give the ball back to the Lions. Neither team has really gotten into a good rhythm. Defense has a lot to do with that. Swatted behind. Stallings maintains possession. 
And now dumps it into the zone here on the right side. Off the screen, this is Mize. Senior attacker. Over on the far side. Working against the defense on the left wing. One hop to pass. That ball is loose on the grass. Battle for it, and it looks like Huggins comes up with it for ESD. Dumps it back to Scott. Outlet pass up to the near side. Lost the handle, but gets it back. Checked off the ball. Good play there by Henry Boykin. And Boykin fires it into the net goal. Boykin forces the turnover, picks up the loose ball, and dumps it in. And the Lions are back within two at six to four. It can happen just that fast. Back to the Eagles. Back to the Eagles scored four and that's a goal to take a four goal lead. Here come the Lions back and Scott again up to the task. Saves it and picks it up. He's protected inside that crease there. Did a good job keeping it there from not letting the ball roll back out into the danger zone. Here comes ESD on the attack. Fighting through the defense. Get it out to Conrad. Conradi dumps it over to the right side. Now to Rodvold. Halfway through the third period. Go back into his left. Now swings it over to the right side to Fletcher Calvert. Calvert on the attack from the right. Dumps it back behind the net. Left side. From the right and the shot bounces high over the net. Deflected perhaps by Fultz. And whistles blow. Not sure why. All right, they got it all sorted out. It'll be Eagles ball as play resumes. And tried to sling that one low into the net. Did Sean Brown, but the shot sails wide right. Stays with the Eagles. And again, Fultz up to the task. With the save, kicked it out to Luke Nowak. And Nowak gives it back to Fultz. And checked off the ball, stolen away by ESD. Now through the defense, and shot into the net goal. That was good work for the Eagles. That's number 40, Cooper Rainey. As a flag comes in after the play, we'll see what the, what the goal will stand. Rainey with the steal, fought through the defense, got the goal to go in, and then took a shot. Seven four Eagles regain a three goal advantage. The last flag was not called. So they pick up the flag and the turnaround wraparound goal. Two quick goals in the span of about three or four seconds as the Eagles control the face off. Just kind of a dump, a no look pass to Jack Widow, but picked it up. And whipped around for the 360 into the net. And just like that, it's 8-4 to four in favor of ESD. Goal by number 36, Jack Whittem. The 
So the Lions trim the four goal lead in half and look up five seconds later and it's back up to an 8-4 advantage for ESD. And a violation on the faceoff will give the ball back to the Eagles. Here come the Eagles on the attack again, looking for their biggest lead of the game. This is Blair Brennan with it. They dump it over on the far wing to Fletcher Calvert. Calvert moving to his left centered. Back behind the net. Centering pass on top. And that shot, one hops over the net. Back stopped by the Eagles, they'll maintain, maintain possession. Right side. On the far side, shakes off the defense, and that shot sails high from Sean Brown. 3.49 to go third period. On the attack, left side, and the centering pass, and a block again by Foles. Great job there. That was point blank. Set up nicely by the Eagles. But Fultz was there and kept it out of the net and St. Mark's gets it back. Fultz bringing it out now, dumps it over here to the right side, almost threw it away and staying in bounds nicely. Tippy toeing up the sideline was Connor Duffy. Checked off the ball, but that will draw a whistle. And it's gonna be a turnover, the ball will go to ESD. Brennan with it. And that shot into the net goal. And ESC starting to pull away now. Eight to three, your score. Nine to three, pardon me. Nine four. I'll get it right eventually. I'm getting sunbaked. That's what's happening. Brennan with the goal. Nine to four, your score. <laughs> Plenty of time left for a comeback here for St. Mark's. Face off is lover number nine, Alex Yang. Lions ball over on the far side. This is Picagli with it. Centered over to Stallings. Now back to the near side to Paul. On the right wing, Mize, double team. Gets ground, gets it back to Paul. Pass left side, and again, a kick save by Scott. That was set up beautifully by the Lions as the flag comes in, but Jake, Jack Scott is just all over it. And checked off the ball again. And that'll be a penalty, the penalty called a few moments ago. The flag came in. This will be a penalty here on St. Mark's with 2.12 to go in the third period. Piggly flagged for the foul. So ESD will have the man advantage here with 2.12 to go in this third period.
So one man advantage here for the Eagles. Pass one to the near side. Centering to Rainey, over on the left side, and again, a nice save by Fultz. Fighting for the ball in front of the crease, and he is finally able to scoop it back into safety. And St. Mark's maintains possession. Fultz dumps it off to the left, long pole on the left side, now centered. And Henry Boykin will bring it up. And we've got a flag. On this side of the field, I didn't see the flag come in. Looks like a penalty going to be called here on ESD. One thing I would fix about lacrosse, it would be this. It takes way too long to uh, get the penalties sorted out. Fans on both sides getting a little frustrated here at the stoppage of play. So the penalty was called on St. Mark's' ESD ball with 118 to go in the third period. That's an interesting penalty, but no penalty served. Pass here to the near side. Working to his left is Rod Bull. Sends it back behind the net and tipped out of bounds, so it will stay with the Eagles with 55.4 seconds to go. Over on the far side, this is Brown with it. Brown to the left side, shot kicked away by Fultz. Deflected all the way out near the midfield line and swatted out of bounds, and that will ESD ball. Right side, looking for the wraparound and into the net goal by Jack Whittem. And that makes you score now 10 to four with 31.3 seconds to go. Biggest lead of the ball game by either club. Thirty-one point three seconds left in quarter number three. Eagles have staked out a six-goal advantage here. After St. Mark's have pulled it within two. Battle for it off the face-off, and it is controlled by the Lions. They've got time to get a goal here before the end of the third period if they can. Working through the defense, knocked down, and flag comes flying in. Lions maintain possession, 10 seconds to go. Penalty coming up here on the Eagles at some point. The wrap around right into the glove of Jack Scott. And that's gonna be the end of the third period. A good period for ESD. And your score at the end of the first 36 minutes of play, the Eagles 10, the Lions four. We'll take a break, be back for the fourth and final period of this 2022 tournament. You're watching the 2022 SBC 4A Boys Across Championship on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts. But did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com.
Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a -a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Three quarters in the books, one quarter left to go here. Episcopal School of Dallas on top of St. Mark's 10 to 4. Merle Birch and Jack Farrell here, Les Clary. Keeping an eye in and in the broadcast. Cross check called on Michael Cohen. That was the penalty on ESD as the third quarter expired. So he'll serve a one minute penalty to start this fourth period. Just underway, fourth period. Still 10 to four, your score, and it's ESD ball. And now St. Mark's gets the turnover. Working on the attack from right to left. And I'm checked off the ball. Over to the left side, St. Mark's with it. Murphy Paul. Apparently stepped on the sidelines and it'll go it'll go back to ESD. Pass one here to the near side. ESD now moving from left uh, left to right. By the way, the team's flipping sides at the end of the third quarter. So ESD with the ball in the navy blue. We'll be in no hurry with a six goal lead here in this fourth and final period. There is an 80 second shot clock, remember. But it really is only coming to play maybe twice in both games we've done here today. This is Rod Vold. Pass on the far wing. Taking off the defense, working back behind the net. 25 seconds on the shot clock. Out on top. They get it over to Rudbold. Pass on the left side and a shot into the net goal. Nice pass from Rodbold. And he found Cooper Rainey. Leaping into the air, takes the pass and fires into the net before even touching the ground. And it is 11 to four Eagles. Six left in this one, 11-4, ESD pulling away. Five and answer goals since St. Mark's pulled within two at six to four. But there is still time, goals can come in bunches. And the ball will go back to St. Mark's. Pass to the near side. Yeah. 
Working on the far wing. Working behind the net. St. Mark's needs the goal to get some momentum back. Center it out on top. Now they swing it over to the right side. I believe this is Boykin with it. And the bounce shot sails over the net. Backstop by the Lions. They'll maintain possession with 9.22 to go. Working to his right, centering. Demise, now they swing it over here to the near side to Jack Gordy. Working back behind the net. Gordy, back over to, on the right side. Boykin with it. Shot clock down to 10. Boykin shakes off the defense, loses the handle. Down to five, and it's gonna be a turnover anyway as ESC comes up with a loose ball. Here come the Eagles pushing it up left to right. This is Cam Conradi over on the left side. And checked out of bounds, collision there. The ball will go back to the Lions with 8.27 to go. Mize bring it across the half, the midfield stripe, into the attack zone. Oh, good pass, found somebody in the back door, and it's a goal for the Lions. Henry Picagli off the pass from Mize. Mize drew the traffic out, and Picagli cut in back door. And St. Mark's gets on the board, makes it now 11 to five. And St. Mark's controls this way. Oh, a turnover and a goal. Trying to dump it back to Fultz, I believe. And Sean Brown intercepted the pass and had an empty net and just put it in. That's about as close to an own goal as you're ever going to get. So Sean Brown with the Christmas present makes it 12 to 5. Tough break there for the Lions. They were just trying to set it up to the goalkeeper. And here comes ESD again, Eli Huggins. Centers it. And that shot sails wide right. Backstop by the Eagles. They'll maintain possession with 7.42 to go in the ball game. Left side. Fletcher Calvert with it. Moving right, and that shot sails wide left, hooking left as the wind blows it away. Stays with the Eagles with 7.18 to go. Looks like Xavier Montero with the ball right now for ESD. Comes it to Fletcher Calvert. Calvert behind the net, picked up. Dump, dumps it out on top to Brown. Back behind the net, centering pass, shot, and into the net goal. Connor Rainey again, nice ball movement there by the Eagles. Got the flow going one way and they got it back to Rainey, went back the other way and it's 13 to five with 6.44 to go.
Face off, still loose, battled for, and finally EST controls it. Good work there by Huggins. Now, yeah, looks like a timeout. 6.33 left in this one. It is all ESD right now, 13 to 5. We'll just keep it here. Thanks again to Jeff McCrary, athletic director here at St. Andrews. Bob Windham, commissioner of the SPC. Looking forward to closing out the season next week in Houston for the girls across championship games as long as, as well as the baseball and softball championship games. Haven't figured out a way how to do golf yet. Not on our budget anyway. A lot of the spring sports are pretty sprawling. Golf, track and field, that's tough to do. Might be able to do tennis. I don't think we're going to try it this year. We'll be back at it again next week. Baseball, softball, Tuesday night. Regular season winding down for the UIL and TAP schools. Playoffs will start next weekend for softball. Thirteen five, six thirty three to go here in quarter number four. All right, back to the action. ESD goes to work with an eight-goal lead. Pass over to the far side. Rod Bold with it. Dumps it back behind the net. And slipping and falling but maintaining possession is Dax Dundon. Now out on top. And that shot deflected up over the net. It'll stay with the Eagles with 5.50 to go. Inside. Uh, six minutes in this fourth and final quarter. Eagles bring it out, dump it over to the right side. And that shot, that somehow caught the upper right corner of the net. The bounce shot, like one of those old Pong games that Jack is way too young to remember. But Dax Dundon got it to go in, and it's 14 to 5. Five forty-one to go, fourteen to five. ESD in command of this one, and they control another face-off. This time, it's Will Benners with it. Benners comes out and dumping it off to Xavier Montero. Starting to see some other faces come into the game here, just a little bit. Eagles in no hurry with a nine-goal lead coming up at the five-minute mark. Dump it back to Brown behind the net. And the centering pass into the net goal. ESD has found something they like, and it's working for them. Jack Whittem. No goal. They wave it off. Crease violation. So no goal there, crease violation called. The ball goes back to St. Mark's. 
On the left side, that shot ricochets high, and again, they got a new goalkeeper in, by the way. No, it is Jack Scott. I'm losing my mind. And Winburton Sunbake. Jack Scott with another sensational save. Lions, right side, and Scott again up to the task, point blank. Right into the wicker. And here come the Eagles moving from left to right. Bonavazian splits the defense, keeps it alive. Coming up on the four minute mark here. Dumps it back behind the net. Over on the far side now to Montero. Montero slips, takes a seat, gets back up, checked off the ball, loose on the grass, kicked around, still loose. And the ball will go back to St. Mark's with 3.46 left in this one. <laughs> left side, St. Mark's. Mai slips and falls, gets back up, stays with the ball. Checked off the ball now and scooped up by the Eagles. Here comes ESC on the attack, dump it over to the left side of Montero. Out on top to Jackson Pennington. Pennington will dump it off to an incoming player from the sideline. That would be Dax Dundon. Dundon still with it. Three minutes to go. Dundon was looking like he was going to try to wrap around, and he was just kind of bear hugged there as the flag comes flying in. This will be a penalty here on St. Mark's as soon as they touch the ball again. Out on top to Rodvold. Near side, Calvert. Out on top, two and a half to go. Shot clock down to 20 seconds. Eagles content to milk it down here. Now they start their move. Rob Bull with it on the left side. Pass over on the right side. Dundon, shot, kick, save. Nice job there again by James Fultz. Save is made by number one, Ian Williams. And as Henry Schechter comes up with the loose ball, the penalty will be called here on St. Mark's with 2.13 to go. Second penalty here on St. Mark's. Coming up on the two minute mark. ESD with a one man advantage here. Over on the right side. Brown with it. Over the rod bowl. Centering pass and the shot is intercepted and stolen away by St. Mark's. Good defense there by the Lions. Battle for the loose ball on the near side. Eagles come up with it. Over on the far side. Shot sails wide right. It will go out of bounds and stay with ESD. With one minute and 32 seconds left. Coming up on the one minute mark. ESD on the attack, left side, Calvert with it. Dumps it back behind the net. Calvert gets it back. Centering pass on top, goes too high, waiting for it near midfield. And ESD maintains possession. Ball poked away from behind, but the Eagles maintain. Under a minute to go. Rod Gold with it. Brown. Shot clock is still in effect. Brown still with it. Left side. Centering pass and the shot kicked away. Nice job 
by Fultz. 33 seconds to go. Shot clock is off now. Out on top to Brown. 25 seconds, they don't have to shoot it, they can just run out the clock here. Jake Swift dumps it over on the far wing. Ten seconds. Long pass up to the far sideline, down to three, two, one, and that is going to do it. 14 to 5, your final score. The Episcopal School of Dallas Eagles over the St. Mark's Lions. And the Eagles are your 2022 SBC 4A Boys Lacrosse Champions. And a well played game here. Not quite the drama that we had in the early game, but an entertaining match nonetheless. The final score is St. Mark's 5, ESD 14. I guess, Jack, we should probably try to keep it here and go ahead and get the award ceremony, and then we'll wrap it up. We'll step aside. We'll just keep the stream up for the award ceremony and then be back to wrap it up. Again, I want to thank Jeff McCrary, the athletic director here at St. Andrews. Bob Windham, the commissioner of the SPC. Les Clary, the, Q, uh, the coach, our QA, keeping an eye on the ear in the broadcast, making sure that we stay down the air and sounded good. Our technical director, Suna Vincott. Jack Farrell, our producer. My name is Merle Birch. I'm signing out from St. Andrews. We'll keep the stream up until the award ceremony, but we'll sign out for now. Your final score once again, ESD 14. St. Mark's 5, the Episcopal School of Dallas Eagles are the 2022 uh, SPC 4A Boys Across champions. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you next time right here on Vibe Live. Good night, everybody.
Please stay tuned for the trophy presentation on lower fields in about a couple minutes. He's going to go back on that. Okay, so tell him I said hello, and I thought he did really well. Okay, all right, we'll see you. Okay. littering my stuff in the room. Where's my sister? They um, said they were going to wait and then go down and see you before they got on the bus. Yeah. Thank you. That's me too. That is not my power agent. We would like for everyone to turn their attention to the, to the fields where we will have the, our trophy presentation. First of all, congratulations to our two championship game participants, the ESC Eagles and the St. Mark's Lions. Jeff McQuarrie, Athletic Director at St. Andrews and President of the, S of the SBC, will be handing out the trophies to the two teams. First, the runner-up trophy goes to the St. Mark's Lions. Now the championship trophy goes to the ESD Eagles. Congratulations to both teams on their accomplishments.